Hi, I'm Dr. Gonzalez from the Performance Place. Uh, did you know that actually IT band issues is not the only cause of pain on the outside part of the knee while you're running? And actually, if not diagnosed correctly and treated correctly for a certain period of time, can actually decrease your chances of hitting your goals and you'll miss a lot of training time. Keep watching as we highlight a case today which actually is very commonly misdiagnosed as IT band syndrome. And there's actually three common conditions which mimic IT band pain in runners. We're going to go through each one of those three today. The first of three is popliteal tendonitis. And you might ask, what the heck is a popliteal tendon? And it's actually a tendon of the muscle called the popliteus, which runs in the back part to the outside part of the knee and runs just deeper underneath of the IT band. So commonly, it feels like IT band pain. This is actually a musculoskeletal ultrasound or an MSK ultrasound of that structure in an ultrasound of the knee. So we really just want to show you how deep the area is to the IT band and how close it can actually seem like IT band pain. See that groove I talked about? There is a little ball structure right in there and I can almost angle, I can change angles on it and that ball disappears and it comes back. Disappears and comes back. But overall, appreciate the relationship or the depth of here's the popliteal, popliteal tendon and here is the uh, IT band. If this muscle is not working properly, oftentimes you'll have pain when you start and stop your run. I know personally I've experienced right when you stop and hit a light, it feels like you can't start again, like it's stabbing into your knee. And also it's a very high probability that lateral meniscal tears will actually come from dysfunction of this muscle, which actually brings us to number two. Now lateral meniscus tears is something that can very closely mimic IT band pain and we've run into that a lot with the people that we see. The problem is that la the lateral meniscus is cartilage. It's a very different type of structure than uh, the IT band itself, so which is more tendinous, uh, we can even say muscular and ligaments, they actually they heal very differently than cartilage does. So it's important to know this in the very beginning. This often feels like fullness or tightness, especially when you bend the knee. There might be a clicking or catching uh, that you notice in a certain portion of the knee. And sometimes, sometimes when you plant and twist, it, it can actually feel like uh, an unsteadiness or an instability, some people call it. It's almost like it's going to give way. In this MSK Ult Center of the Knee, we want to show you the relative depth of the lateral meniscus in relationship mainly to the other structures we talked about, the IT band and the popliteus. Actually, this isn't going to be the IT band all the way per se, but you can see I, I made this wedge here and that wedge is a representation of the lateral portion of the meniscus or the outside part of the meniscus and just above it here is the uh, LCL but if I move backwards again you can see the LCL is really in the same plane as that IT band so they're really in close relationship to each other here's the lateral meniscus, that wedge and then the IT band's right on top and again, I'll go back into that popliteus tendon. Last but not least is actually the IT band can be an issue. But realistically, the band itself, which runs very superficial, which we saw in MSK ultrasound, is not the issue. A lot of times it's the bursa just deep to it. This bursa can be affected or, or pressure can affect it based upon some of the biomechanical changes that runners usually have. Um, some tightness of the IT band or outside of the hip structures and a lot of times this Bursa is very full of pain fibers and it'll tell you very early that you should stop running. So it's important to know which actual structure is involved, whether it be the IT band, the bursa, the popliteal tendon, or the lateral meniscus. We want to make sure that people are educated about MSK ultrasound because you see it's very useful in diagnosing conditions properly. So if you're in the Southern California area, feel free to call us. Uh, I think we do a very good job at MSK ultrasound. It's very important to get diagnosed properly before you go on with treatment. Now that you're pretty confused about what you have, actually I'll let you know that actually that's one of the points of this video, is we want to be able to educate people and show them what they don't know yet. So we want you to question all these self-diagnosis tools and self-treatments a lot of people use because a lot of people don't get themselves better because they're self-treating. And remember that self-diagnosis and self-treating is not a substitute for years of experience and education in sports medicine. So most of the time I recommend get an image, see a doc, and get a good direction. Even if you don't get treated, it's nice to have a good direction to go into. And you'll save yourself a lot of time dropping races and so on. So my overall recommendations are usually MSK ultrasound first, get a good diagnosis, see a good sports medicine MD, ortho, chiropractor, or therapist so you know the good direction. 
and then follow through with the recommendations because isn't that really what you paid them for? Don't go in and say, well, I'm going to do something else. Usually you want to use them for their knowledge. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it helps.